Hey guys, Week 4 is here and we're back with our Fieldside Chat. Unfortunately, due to some inclement weather, we're inside at Pathway Students. We're still next to the field, the field's right over there. Um, but here we are and we're ready to go. Uh, week 3 was great, Week 4 is going to be just as good, I think. We have some great matchups and the Dimes and Hammers squaring off, both two talented teams. At the end of the day, we have two 2-1 two teams looking for the third win. And the Hunters and Hustlers, in between there, we have the Aces and the Goblins still looking for that first win. But before we go to Week 4, Preston, what are your takeaways on Week 3? Yeah, uh, it was a great week with a lot of close games, but what really stuck out to me was how the Hammers have trouble closing games. Um, obviously, they're a great team, and those first three quarters, they look unbeatable almost, especially with Wendell in the backfield making plays, and uh, his ability is insane. But it seems, you know, they get that lead and they get comfortable, and we have these teams starting to come back. We saw it with the Giraffes, uh, and you saw it with the Hustlers, saw it with a lot of different teams, and um, yeah, that's something they're going to have to improve on, especially down the road, especially come playoff time. Um, when you can't give those teams second chances in uh, late life, you got to uh, end them when they're down. Um, and so that's something I'm interested to watch moving forward and see if the Hammers can fix that. My biggest takeaway, uh, it pains me to say it, is um, you know just the dimes. We have no real uh, you know effort when it comes to showing up. I think we're the best team in the league. I think we're the most talented team in the league. I think no one can argue with that. But you know our biggest weakness is trying to beat ourselves because when we show up and you know. We, we were favorited by everyone in the, uh, the earlier field side chat, and then we show up, and I got six guys, and my center is a guy who doesn't even play for me. You know, I'm getting one, two seconds in the pocket, and I can make passes, and, you know, the stats show that. But at the end of the day, it's just hard when, you know, your guys just aren't there, and you got seven guys and no subs, and we had an injury. Tim Brown rolled his ankle early in the game, and he, he just sat there at free safety but couldn't do much because, you know, he was hurting, yeah. and we had no subs, no yeah. players. We just got to show up. And it's not just those big players like Cornell Wilson you were missing. It was like the Jackson Tedrowski holding Campbell those blockers that give you yeah. time in the pocket. My starting three centers were all not there. So that's, yeah, uh, John that's Riley couldn't make it either, John, yeah. John, Holden, uh, Jackson, Charlie. Charlie. Those Charlie. are like Wow, yeah. All my centers just gone. Mm. Uh, my biggest takeaway is the Hunter's ability to win. Um, really, it just comes down to the heart they have and, and the leadership they have from Omar. Um, I think it's great. I think they're going to be a really good team, that they're going to grow into a team that's going to be a real contender in uh, the playoffs and possibly even the championship. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, my biggest takeaway from this week was that really any team in this league can make, can have a really good game and can win. Granted, the Aces didn't win, neither did the Goblins. However, they put on very good performances against very good teams they in competed. the Hustlers and, yeah. and um, Pioneers. the Pioneers. Like, the, the fact that the games were so close this week all in all shows, like, this league is that competitive that anyone can win at any time. And it really comes down to who's playing the best football come that playoffs. Day, yeah. I got to go with the Hunters as well and say how much, how personally Omar and his guys take everything. I mean, we knew it from last year on the Cox. Uh, Omar will take everything personal and use everything to win. But, I mean, the last week's field side chat, five, all five guys that were there picked the dimes to win and pretty much win comfortably. Mm -hmm. No one really thought that game was going to be close. But Omar and his guys, even though, I mean, no one's going to argue that the dimes do probably have more skill than them. But Omar took that personally. He took all that with all of his guys. He's put that into his guys as well, and they came out with it. Really, I mean, the score seemed closer than the game was. The Hunters controlled that game. So, Yeah, I think the Hunters are really good, and I think a lot of teams that are good are good because they have the ability to win close games. In the VXFL, when you have all these teams that are this close in talent, the ability to win close games is super important. Um, and I think we saw that with the Goblins. They lost by six points. The offense couldn't get going. Same with the Aces. They dropped two extra points. Uh, Preston dropped a pass. At, for, yeah. uh, probably would have been Didn't a touchdown. Didn't should have in the first drive. Yeah, so yeah. it's just small coaching decisions that make a big difference. I mean, the drafts, the Hammers game was close because we couldn't close in the end. Every game, every team this year has had at least one close game. Um, so the ability to close games. I think games. the Goblins, did the Goblins score an offensive touchdown? They did not. No. 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 Ralph Lynch Ralph. with the pick six yeah. was the only, only touchdown of the game. So. pick six, though. Yeah, and I mean, even you can uh, debate that last play there for the Goblins. They could, if they would have punted, maybe the Hustlers don't score that touchdown. They go into overtime. So it's just things like that. The small decisions had a big impact on these close games. All right, and now we're going to start going back to our impact players and what players had the biggest impacts these past week who may be um, becoming an MVP or who just helps their team out um, when needed. Preston, who's your impact player for week three? Yeah, it's hard to not come to the games and not or to come to the games and not see this player. He stands off the uh, stands out among the rest immediately and that's Wendell Bethel. You can't come and watch the Hammers play and not realize the impact that Wendell Bethel has 
on their team. Uh, one of the most gifted players in the league, and a guy that's where I found a real team player and a joy to be around. He's always in good spirits, um, and he makes he makes it look easy. I mean, obviously his talents way above most of the rest of us out there, um, but you know he's still a good teammate to the rest of the guys, and uh, I feel like that fuels their camaraderie and what really drives them forward. Not to mention he had some great plays and great stats this week. My impact player has got to be Louis Deschauer. Uh Everyone out there saw in that early game that he just took control of the game. There was uh, you know, a lot of question marks on who would play QB because there was Michael Gould and Louie both taking snaps uh, last week. But Louie just showed up and showed out. You know, he controlled the game. He ran the ball. He threw the ball. He had touchdowns. You know, and he's also a great player on defense. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of the top defensive guys in the league. And you know, he just is all, everywhere on that field. And, and without him, the hustlers you know, run flat a lot of times. Yeah, last week he won Offensive Player of the Week. And this week he has a case for defensive with his two interceptions. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's an all-around player. He leads that hustlers team very well. Uh, my impact player of the week has to be Steven Spangler. I mean, he just he played a great game. Um, I think he's the Aces' best deep threat because he, he just has the ability to go up and come down with the ball mm -hmm. every time. It's 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 impressive. And we, it's not that we put a bad defender on him, but he just he's just an amazing player, and and Absolutely. I give him props for that. And he threw a deep ball to Will Morgan too. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. Uh, I think. Oh. I think my uh, impact player of the week has to be Gavin Tierney. Um, Gavin, he's huge. Like, I didn't know that he was, like, that tall and that fast, but overall he's just an athlete all in all. Uh, he plays soccer, correct? Yeah. Uh, like, from translating from soccer to going over to football, being able to not just running around kicking the ball but catching it as well and being able to play amazing defense on uh, Jamie Prabula, right? Mm -hmm. Held him, like, four yards. Um, I don't think that many catches, if any. But he played an amazing game defensively and played amazing offensively as well. I said one of the things that shocked me at the combine were his hands. Yes. His hands were phenomenal, in my opinion, especially coming from a soccer player. It's not something I expected to see. I didn't know much about him at that point, but his hands were phenomenal. Yeah, one guy that stuck out to me this week was Ralph Lynch. I shouted him out in the first field side chat before week one, but he was kind of quiet through the first two weeks. But this week he finally made some noise in that I think it was like an 89-yard pick six. Yeah. Might have been the longest in VXFL history. Caught in the back of the end zone, brought it all the way back for the only Goblins touchdown of the game. And we were in the booth that one, me and Jackson. We were like, what's he doing running it out? Off a deflection. He probably should have kneeled it and took it to the 20, but able to take it to the other end zone all the way for a pick six. That was a huge play, only score. So really impactful guy. Yeah, big play for that Goblins team. My impact player has got to be Cameron Burns. I mean, we've seen this Hunter team, Hunter's team progress from week one to week three, and Cameron Burns is a big reason why. Their passing game has evolved. I mean, you saw week one, man, he would just run the ball or throw it up to Omar. Now in week three, I mean, Cameron Burns, he passed very well for two touchdowns, I think, threw the deep ball pretty well, and then could check it down to his guys or run the ball or scramble when he had to. Um, so Cameron Burns is really helping the Hunter's team, and he's making him a dangerous threat as we get closer and further in the season to playoffs. Um, so, yeah, watch out for Cameron Burns. All right, guys, now to the fun part. Let's make some predictions for this Saturday. We'll start with the Hammers-Dimes game at 9 o'clock right here at Masters Academy. Preston, who do you have? Yeah, I'm excited to see this game. A lot of star power on either side of the ball. Um, and last week, I picked the Dimes over the Hunters. We know how that went. Uh, and just because I can't trust the Dimes to show up, and I, you never know how they're going to play, or what player is going to be there, and just because of the completeness of the Hammers, quarters one through three, see what they do in the fourth quarter. Uh, I have to go Hammers here. Uh, the Hammers have looked amazing, uh, even minus Wendell. Uh, they look like a potent offense and uh, a formidable defense as well that has really stopped offenses in their tracks. And uh, it will be interesting to see what they do with the Dimes wide receiver. We can stop core. everything except the Will Wagner deflection. That's that is true. unstoppable. That is that is unstoppable. I and mean, he planned that. I know he did. Like I said, they're on purpose. Yeah, yeah skill strike. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm excited to see this defensive matchup against their wide receivers. And I think they, I have the Hammers here by a slight edge. You know, as a football fan in general, I think everyone's excited, if everyone on my team shows up, to see, you know, Jackson Trzowski, Charlie Marks, Holden Campbell, John Riley, all taking snaps, blocking. And then on the outside, you have Sean Josie, Jaheim Grisdom, Cornell Wilson, and Deion Collins. Mm. As the QB of the Dimes, I am so excited. I think uh, if we have a full team, no one can stop us. The only problem is, will we have a full team? You know, as a coach, I'm only aware of these dropouts maybe minutes before the game. You know, if, if all, you know, uh, I know last week we expected to have J.J. there. Yeah. And he just didn't even, you know, he slept in and it was a 1.30 game, <laughs> which is hard to do. But, um, you know, I just think if we have everyone there, we're unstoppable. You know, uh, I think 
I've, I've played great QB all year. You know, I'm not going to hype myself up, but I am leading the league in touchdowns and passing yards. And, and interceptions. interceptions. Actually, no, Jackson Gravely took he over might. that crown. Hey, he might. So, uh, congratulations. So, uh, well, you're still second place, isn't Jackson. regardless. <laughs> it's close. It's so, a tight race. <laughs> so, I'm excited. I think, are you missing Wendell this week? I'm not missing him this week. Next week. Oh, so, uh, that's uh, scary. But <laughs> I think uh, um, Cornell and Wendell are great friends. I'm excited to see that matchup. Oh, I'm excited I am to too. see this game. Uh, if you're not there at 9 a.m., I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Do you know if there are any absences that are confirmed? Confirmed? Right now, we have zero guys missing. Okay. Well, I'm excited so, if that were to hold up, um, even though Jack's not the biggest supporter of the Pioneers, I am taking the dimes. Um, I think they have by far the best team in the league. I think Jaheim can possibly take care of Wendell. And then, you know, who do you have covering Cornell if Wendell's on Jaheim? Or, you know, vice versa. So I think Dimes are going to come out with the win here. I, I hope they do because I want the meme to happen. Um, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah, not to mention Chris Jacobs and Cornell <coughs> Wilson. Yeah. Both, both rushing on defense. It's going to be a good game. That's, yeah. excited. I'm, excited. That's, that's, I'm excited. That's an intense this is rush be right there. An intense game, yeah. Um, personally, though, I have to go with my gut and say that the Hammers are going to pull this one out. Um, the Hammers are just more of a complete team. Uh, whether it be attendance or how they play on the field. Um, Jackson may be the leader in passing yards and touchdowns. However, he kind of just throws the ball up to whoever calls his <laughs> name. <true>. And <laughs> he has said, it is on record that he has said this multiple so times. So the strategy is to call his name. Yes. Yeah, so uh, half, half of my TDs came from your guys not being set last week, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. But regardless, having to go up against Jaheim, that is, that is an intense player to go against. Yep. Uh, I'm thankful that Cornell wasn't there. It kind of like helped us out just a little bit more um, in the long term. It kept Tim Brown on the field. Um, it just gave us the it gives the edge overall. Um, Tim Brown a lot of the time and a lot of your other players as well kind of just took breaks on plays where if the ball didn't come directly towards them or if it wasn't on their side they kind of just stopped. However, with the Hammers, what I see a lot is everyone rushes the ball, whether it be it's. 30 yards down the field and they're on the like complete opposite or if it's right in front of them they will all swarm the ball and they will all try to make a play on the ball to stop them so i got hammers by it's going to be a very close game here maybe by like four i'll make a quick bowl prediction this might be the game of the year possibly it could possibly be the game of the year yeah i think if you have a full team you have a I think you'll probably win, but that's a big if. And I'll go with my gut and say you won't have a full team. That's a, that's a great, that's a great <laughs> and, and for that reason, I'm going to go with the Hammers. And saying that, I mean, I think the Giraffes proved last, last week with Gavin, you can slow down Jamie, you can slow down Daniel Williams, you can slow down guys, but you can't really slow down Wendell. I know you have Jaheim, I know you have guys that are extremely talented, but... I think you're going to be missing some guys, too, and I don't think you'll be able to stop the Wendell-Bethel show, and I think the Hammer's going to pull it out. I think one of the most impressive things about Wendell uh, is that he gives time for his teammates to set up blocks for him, and the Hammer's done a great job of setting up those blocks, and he just doesn't rush through a hole. He, he allows time for the play to develop, and he obviously has the agility to, to wait, and more than some of us would. He's pretty but, fast, too. But, uh, yeah, he, he does he's a lot. A but his, his, his team, I want to give them, kind of I want to give the Hammers Absolutely. credit in general for blocking for him. They do a great yeah, job. Yeah, we do a great job, but the Dimes are a matchup nightmare on defense. I mean, you have Jaheim, you have Cornell, you have Deion Collins. I mean, from Holden Campbell's not easy to guard either. Jalen uh, Kapirian, I mean, they have a really deep uh, wide receiver core, and they can block pretty well, too. Um, with Chris Jacobs blitzing too. It's going to be hard on offense to get things off, but I'm excited. We have Wendell, we have Jamie, we have Parker Townsend, Daniel Williams, I mean, Jimmy Durant. I mean, we have a lot of talent on this team. We're, we're excited for this matchup. We really are. Uh, it's probably going to be a high-scoring game, I think, just because of the talent we have, every team has. Um, but I think the Hammers, I think we're going to pull it out. I really do. I like our squad, and I think our dedication is going to um, help us win this game. Uh, the Dons haven't played as a full team yet at all, really. No, um, I've, ne I've never had... Week two is the closest you can. I've never had Sean, Josie, Chris Jacobs... Oh, Sean. I've completely forgot yeah. about Sean. I've yeah. never had Sean, Josie, Chris Jacobs, Cornell Wilson, and Jaheen all take the field at once. And that is a and, scary thing. And one of, the, one of the worst things last week was the fact that I had to play free safety. Which, <laughs> on record, I think I am the heaviest free safety, even in the NFL. <laughs> it, is, it is just a grueling position, especially when, you know, you're focused about, you know, making throws. And then you got to blink, and you see four guys just walk over as, you know, 
guys are just running all over your team. And that's, that's a hard position to yeah. play. And right now, Jaheim leads the league in catches. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with 16 right now. So, I mean, just Jackson throwing the ball up to him, it's working. So trying to stop that will be tough, but we're excited for it. I think the Hammers will pull it out and be 4-0, taking on the Pioneers next week. All right, and our second game of the day, we have the 0-3 Aces who are going to be taking on the Giraffes, who are 1-2 right now um, after our tough loss this past week. And Preston, what do you got? Uh, Aces on top here. Uh, I think both teams are... <laughs> 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 both teams have the same record after this game, and... Uh, you know, I'm really excited the direction we're, we're training. As I said earlier, um, I think we should have won that game against the Pioneers. Uh, there was a coaching mistake early on where we should have punted, um, where they probably don't score if they're not on the 15-yard line. And you know, obviously I dropped a pass and some other things, but we're moving in the right direction. That's all behind us now. Obviously, missing Steven Spangler is going to be a little bit of a hit for us. A uh, great player, as we mentioned earlier, impact player. But um, Jackson Gravely, man, he's a, he's a player. Um, and I know he's getting smarter every week. He's learning the way... The game works at this level. Every every week is improving, um, and I think we're going to cut back on the the interceptions and the turnovers. We win the turnover battle, uh, we win more games. That's just is plain and simple. And uh, the Aces, I know we have what it takes, and this week's going to be our first win. Uh, I'd have to say Will Wagner's probably one of my my you know best friends out here. I love the guy. We're in the booth every week together. You know, rocking the Hawaiian shirts together. We we really yeah. are, and that's why it pains me to take the Aces here. I just think there's so many question marks. Is Baser going to be out? He'll be gone, yeah. He'll be gone, yeah. I mean, I think the Aces are just, you know, they're, they're jonesing for a win. They have the coaching to do it, and I think this is the week they get it. Uh, yeah, Aces are going to win this week, and I just think with all your players are going to be there. Steven will be out. Okay. Oh, oh Steven will be out. Steven okay. will be out. Well, having Liam out, too, I think it's going to come down to coaching, and I think Preston's a better coach. Uh, having played with him last year, this year's been a rough start, but you still can't, you, you know, you can't count him out. So I have Aces win this week. Um, it pains me to say this, Will, but I got the Aces winning too. And honestly, I would say you do what I did, motivate your guys with all of us picking against you. But overall, Preston might be like the closest person to myself when it comes to taking things personally. Because as a coach, I can literally, like, I see him fuming right now, being 0-3 after that close game, stepping onto the field, looking over at him, and seeing him trying to, like, pick all of his guys up who are all, like, heads down because they played a great game, but they just couldn't pull it out and they couldn't finish. Um, overall, I think, I just think Ace has got this, got this game in the bag, being with coaching. Uh, Steven may be out, but so will Liam. Um, is there anybody else that you know will be out? Will Kiwan be there? I don't find out until game time. <laughs> uh, well, regardless. Hey, Nate, Nate Ginn is questionable, which is more than I've had in the past three weeks. So. Well, you know that pain you're feeling when you're like, oh, it's, it's a game time decision? Yeah. I have that with six guys every week. <laughs> my, I think my whole team this week is a game time decision. Shrugly's like game time. Hey, like, Nate Ginn, if you're watching this, I want to motivate you. Please be there. You, you see what's going on? I mean, if you're there, this it helps is, me. This is him begging for you to be there. 6-5, <laughs> throw it up. But I got aces. Um, I, mean, I won't say big, but... It'll be a good game. Yeah, you know, in life there's winners and losers. And the la this whole season, me and Preston, we've been big fat losers. That's uh, <laughs> One and two, oh and three. Both of them, let's just say, disappointing, disappointing this year. I think both of our teams want to win. I think I'm missing Liam, you're missing Steven. I'll be missing maybe Shrigley, not sure. Obviously, Sigmund, he came back last week, which was just random, and he'll be gone again. But I think once you miss... Steven, you also have Will Morgan. You have guys. Gravely's one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. We talked to him in the booth. I really, I really Great like guy. the kid. Great guy. Great fellow. I mean, I think he's Interview smart amazing. beyond his years. Also, yeah, one of the nicest guys you're going to meet, too. Oh yeah, but I Great think kid. I think depth-wise, I think we'll be able to pull it out just because after Liam, both missing first-round picks, I think I saw if Kiwan shows up, which right now I'm planning for him to. I'm not sure. <laughs> but even without that, I think Preston is good. But I think we have Gavin Tierney. Mm -hmm. We have... Matthew Dougal. We have guys that can step up around Logan Ross should be there again, which he's a good shoot. I think we have just guys that can step up even without Lee. And there we saw it last week, keeping it to a seven point game that came down to one onside kick that just went wrong versus one of the best teams league without Liam. So I think we'll be able to pull it out. I think we'll get the win. Yeah, having played the giraffes this past week, I know how talented they are. Um, how good defense they can play. Gavin Tierney, he played great defense. Logan Roth, I've coached him last year, he can play great defense. Uh, and then Will Wagner himself on offense, 
He can catch the ball. He can throw it. So they're a talented team. Uh, and we've seen the Aces. They have a game plan. It's just how well they execute it. Um, I do think this might be the first week the Aces get a win, and that's just because of Jackson Gradley. I think he's a great player. Um, he was going to be my impact player by Cam Burns. Man, he's had a great week. But Jackson Gradley is something special. I think this is the reason why the Aces are going to start winning games, and they're going to be a tough opponent um, later in the season. I think it's going to be a close one. I do think the drafts have a chance. Um, I'm kind of 50-50 in this one, but I have to go with the Aces just because of how well they've played um, with the Pioneers last week. All right, with our what second game of the day, we have the Pioneers – or. Sorry, third game of the day. We have the Pioneers taking on the Goblins. The Goblins are 0-3. The Pioneers are 3-0. But don't consider this a blowout just yet. Preston, what do you got? Yeah, this is an interesting matchup with Austin being out this week uh, and, and then being banged up from last week. Um, what's the status on Dylan? And So I do believe Dylan will be back. Uh, he's recovering Goodness. greatly. Um, ben is questionable. Okay. Um, Garrett Helseth will be back. Uh, and besides that, I'll be gone, but... Everyone else should be there. Yeah, so the Goblins, their team is a team that I've been high on throughout the year. Uh, but after last week's performance and their anemic offense, uh, I have to go with the Pioneers here. Uh, even though they haven't quite put the pieces together, I feel like they're going to take a good step forward this week and gelling as a team and figuring things out uh, against the Goblins. The Goblins have got to find some offense. And uh, I'm not blaming on Mason Sweats. I think he just doesn't have enough time in the pocket. They've got to figure out the blocking problem and giving him time to make throws. Um, and Mario McMillan has, has been big for him, but I don't think it's going to be enough to take down the Pioneers this week. I think I, uh, I, I don't think I've taken the Pioneers once in a yeah, field side chat, that. and I'm going to continue to not do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it. Um, you know, I think, uh, are you, are, is Kyle Fahey going to be the head coach out there this week? Uh, actually, he normally is anyway. That's, that's that's just, I thought he was that's the head just, coach that's anyway. Really not true. Is he going to continue um, his head coaching role? <laughs> really, he's just a fundamental coach, I'd say. But he's, he's a great addition to the team, and he will be coaching the boys out there. Um, if allowed, I will also be in Trevor O'Brien's earpiece from Hawaii. Uh, so that's, that's how the What's the time difference there? Um, it'll, I, I, if, if my calculations are correct, it'll be about 3, 4 a.m. So, oh my but anything for the VXFO. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you using an AirPod for the headset? Uh, well, he's going to have an AirPod in here. Yeah, I think that's going to get uh, stepped on in about the second quarter. And, and you know what? That's a risk I'm willing to take because I'm giving him my AirPods. <laughs> and I, s I think, uh, no, I'm sorry. I think the Pioneers win. I think you can't go three weeks out of the win and just not be, you know, just mad. I think, uh, you know, a lot of you guys are hurting. And I think, uh, you know, you're going to. Get punched in the mouth against the Goblins. We're asking to bring you guys to fight really hard against the Hunters, and I'm excited for that game. Or the, the Hammers, I'm excited for that game. All right, so I got the Pioneers. Um, Shocking. I, uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've, t I've taken them every time, and I've, I've haven't been wrong once. So, um, <laughs> you know. He's I, technically I, right. I he's, and that's he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the Pioneers are going to win. Um, you know, a lot of our guys are going to be back this week. A lot of our guys shouldn't be injured. You know, OB's feeling a lot better. Um, he said he's probably 80, 90 percent. Um, Dylan's feeling better. I'm sure by Friday um, or by Saturday he'll be better. And and I just think we'll have a, a more complete team. Maybe still missing Ben Fadiyami, but we'll see. Um, I I think we're just gonna have the coaching and the skill to outmatch the Goblins, especially after not scoring a single time last week. So that's my stance on it. Will Fahey have the goggles? He will have the goggles. That's big. Oh, that's that is big. huge. I yeah I I think. Just because Fahey having the goggles, I have to swing Pioneers here. Uh, with the Pioneers, I have a lot of faith in their guys. Um, other than the injury bug with Ben and uh, Dylan, I really do believe this is like a really good team. They need to learn to get bigger wins of or get bigger uh, margins of victory. Um, they seem to play really close games where they really should not. Uh, granted that Hunters uh, Pioneers game week one that was an amazing game came down to the wire Dylan couldn't make a throw whatever um, we're past that now but Are we? <laughs> oh no I, I let Dylan know every once in a while but regardless um, going into uh, this past week making it such a close game against a very good Aces team uh, injuries uh, they they all got brought up but I think the Pioneers can pull this one out um, off of sheer talent alone. Amarion McMillan, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I would love to see what matchup you're going to put on Amarion. Um, Jared Wolf, he's an amazing player. Um, I even tried to get him for a little while, but I digress. Uh, then, you have, then you have Mason Sweats as well at the helm. 
whether between him and Jared, uh, both of them can make the tough throws that you really need um, from Amarion to catch. And for Ralph Lynch, like him, ste- he's going to step up this game yet again. Is Ralph going to be there? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be there. He's not. I'm pretty sure. I can't speak on it now, Peter. I'm pretty sure yeah. Ralph's not. And, and even then, I think a big thing, not even if, if they weren't even going against my team, but a big thing for the Goblins is how they re- react to the 0-3 mm-hmm. and whether they react to it by being down on themselves or they react to it or by being mad. aggressive. Like and how, our, how, and how I see happening, I see some of their leaders, like Amara McMillan and Mason Sweats, getting down on themselves and saying, you know, we haven't won a game. This team sucks. Why am I here? I really think Jarrett Wolf can, if anything, he's the main leader of that team, more more so than almost any other player on that team. He, he can lead that team to victory by himself if he needs to. Like, he, he'll put the team on his back and then just, just go off from there. You know, honestly, my prediction, I have no reasoning for it at all. I just have some random feeling when I walked in and looked at Austin's beautiful face that he's going to lose this week. And <laughs> I have no reasoning for it. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that the Pioneers are a better team than the Goblins. But I feel like the Goblins are going to pull out no injuries. Even if Dylan and Ben play, I don't, I don't know if they'll be 100%. I know Brock Thomas has been really good this year. Someone I didn't expect to be that good, but... I just had that random feeling that the Goblins are going to get a win this week. I honestly have no clue why, but I think Amarion and Mason are going to have one of those days that they're just feeling it. They walk in, they're feeling good, and then obviously Jarrett Wolf, even if Ralph's gone, Jarrett can step up. They have guys, you know, Donovan Double D Dixon. He's really Don't a fool. Daniel, Daniel too off the edge. So they have guys. I mean, they have the guys to do it. I think you guys have a better team, but I just had that feeling the Goblins are going to win. Yeah, after watching the Aces take the Pioneers on last week, watching Steven Spangler just go up and get balls, I think it's going to be very similar to what Marion McMillan's going to do to their defense. I don't think they match up. I don't think anybody matches up with Amari on the Marion on the Pioneers right now. Um, he might have something different to say about that, but that being said, I do think the Pioneers are going to pull it out. Um, for four quarters, I don't know if the uh, Goblins can keep up. I don't know if the Marion can have that big of an impact for that long. Um, we saw their offense kind of sputter. It was on life support. Uh, last game, and hopefully it'll come back this game. I think it will. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was an upset, but I don't believe it's going to happen this game. I think the Pioneers are going to go undefeated heading to Week 5 for our uh, much-anticipated matchup. I really hope we're both undefeated for Week 5. because That, would that be, will be an amazing this game. This reminds me last year of Cockrell's slugs, slugs when we all thought it was going to be undefeated, yeah. and then we lose to the Gunslingers, the worst team. Yeah, and it and just reminds me of I really hope just, history does not repeat itself. Please, so. please, yeah. All right, and for our last game of the day, we have the Hustlers and the Hunters taking on each other. They're both 2-1, and one, both looking for that third one of the season. They move them up in the standings. Preston? Yeah, again, a game I'm excited for. You know, we saw the Hunters perform last week, and they really came out with a vengeance. Um, you know, this week, some big storylines to watch. We have Andrew Klipstein and Lee with a shower out. Uh, Michael Gould is out as well, I believe. Um, so that, that really hurts the Hustlers here. Um, and the Hunters being a great team unit, only missing Andrew Klipstein. Uh, I think that favors them in this matchup. I have the, the Hunters winning here. Uh, the Hustlers have had a great season so far, much uh, thanks to Louis to shower. Uh, and missing them is going to be a, a big hit to their offense and, and their defense. So, you know, I have Hunters. You know, I think Omar's going to have a great game. And uh, I think Cam Burns has another great week where he puts up some crazy numbers. At full strength, I'd probably go Hustlers just because I've played both of them. And I've actually had to take pool players from both those teams. <laughs> but I, I uh, you know, knowing that Louie's not going to be there and their backup quarterback, Gould's not going to be there, I got to go hammer, or Hunters. There's a lot of H's. Too many H's. There's so, so many H's. Yeah. Hammers, Hunters. Uh, you know, yeah, I just think the uh, Hunters get the one. Uh, yeah, I have Hunters winning. You know, I'm a big fan of the Hunters. Um, I, I think they have a lot of talent and good leadership. Um, I think Louis being out, you know, Michael Gould does not affect the win or loss that much. And I, I think, think it helps. I think it helps. It helps <laughs> win. Um, but I, I do think that Hunters are going to come out here with a win. Uh, going back to last week, um, they were 100% right saying that I take everything personally. And my guys, they're all good friends of mine. They're all just like mini versions of me, especially Peter DeLuke. Um, <laughs> no kidding. If there's one guy that has the biggest Napoleon complex that I know, <laughs> it's Peter DeLuke. And I could say that being a very good friend of his. Um, honestly, Hunter's big here. Uh, knock on wood. I don't want to like, I don't want it to be one of those jinxes. But be with, with Hunter's with by 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter <laughs> Wixon exactly. week one. But, um, sure. 
uh, here, they're missing so many key players, being Louis DeShower, uh, Michael Gould. I'm pretty sure Donquell Wesley will be out as well. And um, a one more player I'm pretty sure Liam was telling us about. Liam will have to step up at quarterback. Yeah, li- <laughs> li- li- I was joking around with Liam. He was like, yeah, I'm going to be quarterback. We're just going to run the ball with Willie Pfeiffer. I was like, mm, interesting. <laughs> but um, here I-, I have to take myself, obviously. I don't want any corruption schemes for uh, the Hunters or anything. But, um, yeah, Hunter's big here. Yeah, Omar, I think you'll have to look elsewhere for your motivation this week oh. other than the field side check because I'm going to take you too. I'm going to take the Hunters. Mm. I think the Hustlers missing too many guys. I think I would take the Hunters over the Hustlers if they were both full. And now missing the guys that the Hustlers are going to be missing, I'll have to, I take the Hunters. I think guys like Peter, who's a small guy, huge heart you know he has a, fast he, has a, he, plays he has a lot of those guys that your whole team goes out there i think the most effort out of anyone out here mm-hmm. and i think you guys are going to pull away i do think i don't think it'll be close either honestly i think the hunter is going to win by at least 10 15 yes, yeah i think both teams are great i think both have a chance to make a playoff run but i think the hustlers are just too depleted with louis michael don quill all being gone i mean louis making a solid case for mvp right now the way he's played these last two weeks and missing him at the helm as quarterback, it's just going to be too much for the Hustlers. I think it's going to be big. Hunters are going to win big. Cameron Burns is going to continue his strong impact. I know you've had a big impact. Is, is Clipstein going to be there? Uh, Clipstein will not be there. He'll be at the same camp as uh, Louis as and said. Michael. Yeah. Well, even so, I think it's going to be Hunters big, probably by two or three scores. Um, next week, the Hustlers might rebound, but this week's not not for them. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked to see so many guys choose seven on seven over the VXFL. Oh, <laughs> as am I. I definitely. Honestly. You think? And the crazy thing is, most of them like they're not going D1 anyway. So I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why. You have a better chance so here, like, buddy. I don't know why they keep going to these camps. They have no future. <laughs> so like, might as well stick there's, it out. There's the rumors. VXFL. We have we have Nick Saban coming to the I, championship. I saw Dan so. Nolan last week. Yeah. yeah. There's rumors that the chopper is gonna fly I think down I've seen and the coach is gonna. Kids go. huddle film, uh, VXFL film. Yeah. Can we make huddle. huddles for VXFL? Like send them in to coaches. So I think this might be a great idea. Be, make this yeah. happen. Somebody, around. somebody, make this happen. I might it's gonna happen, guys. Sign with Conrad. She's staying next week. This segment's very important to us, and we really can't do what we do on Saturdays without our volunteers. So we just want to shout out a few volunteers right now who mean a lot to us and do a lot for us. Yeah, I want to say thank you personally to Alex Cherish. Not only has he been a great teammate, he's been one of the most consistent volunteers being there every week to do our stats for us, uh, and really helps us come time to choose our impact players and players of the week. Uh, it's these efforts from these people that go unseen and go unnoticed, but really allow us to do what we do and create such a unique atmosphere for everyone here. Hands down, I gotta shout out my favorite Keen, Paige Keen. <laughs> she uh, helped me a lot while bringing me waters in that booth. She was uh, always in the concession stand, always gets there early. She is just electric out there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do Trevor O'Brien. Great player on the field, great volunteer off the field. Oh, I mean, he wasn't there this past week because of his injury, but um, always there at 6:30. Always first to be there. This man quit week. his job. He did he <laughs> for did. the VXFL. Quit his job. And you know, always post on his story. Hey, does anybody want to help out volunteering for the VXFL? So that's my volunteer. Uh, I think my volunteer of the week will have to be uh, Jolie Summerall. Um, overall, great pictures, and she even played the national anthem this week. Dude, it was great. It was, it was great. They did amazing, honestly. Amazing. Um, amazing. Those, those pictures, they all come out great, and we all post them on yeah, the yeah. VXFL. All, all these posts you see with the pictures in the background, the cool graphics we're able to make, are because of Jolie and her oh, pictures. Jolie. I got to shout out Gracie. She's been there since week one, 6.30 in the morning, every single Saturday. She, you know, she's there before half the coaches are there. I'm looking at you, Omar. <laughs> so got to shout out her. She's awesome, so... Yeah, thank you, Gracie. I'm going to shout out Tessa and Sarah. Uh, they're, a, they're a ton. They are working on cameras last week. They'll do interviews. They'll do whatever we ask them, um, whenever we ask them. So thank you, guys. We really do appreciate it for all our volunteers. Thank you. For the players out there watching, if you see these volunteers around, tell them thank you. Um, give them a high five. Do something. Um, maybe buy them Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Or go, go to Cafe 66. Buy them a, a program. Meal. Buy them a program. Yeah, they'll, they'll love a program. No, but seriously, say thank you to them, guys. We appreciate them, and you should as well. Um, If you're interested in volunteering, we can give out volunteer hours as well. So um, stop by, ask us what you can help us do. We have tons of jobs available, um, and really, we cannot do it without volunteers. So thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Okay, it's time for our favorite segment of the Fieldside Chat. You had one job. There were some great ones this week. Um, There are so many we could do, but here are our best six. Preston starts off. I got to go to one of our players of the week, Cam Burns. Had a great week, but this pass just, just didn't work out. Cam, you know, he's rolling out. He goes to pass, he's gonna pump fake, and it just falls right out of his hand. Uh, incomplete pass, fortunately, not a fumble, but man, just, it's one of those things that just, it just stinks. You can't do much about it. 
Disclaimer, half of these are probably for the dimes, <laughs> if we're just going to be really honest. And I'll start us off with the kicking abilities for myself. I know, uh, you know, come draft day, I really didn't think about who would be playing kicker. You know, I didn't even think about who would be playing quarterback. And um, I kind of took on both those roles voluntarily. And uh, boy, oh boy, I think I had one kick that went about three yards. I had one kick that went about 12 yards. And I had one kick. Game on the line. It was just an absolute knuckleball. About <laughs> you had you had one that went like eight and then like turned yeah, back turned around. Back, yeah, it decided, <laughs> I think that's actually harder to do than just get it ten yards. And you also <laughs> had multiple kicks that went straight into Michael Turpster's hands that he tried to return as well. I think on one of them, I told all my guys line up right because it's gonna be an onside right, and it actually went left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like kicking, so there's gonna be an open trial for the dimes for kicker. So. Um, I had one job. <laughs> My you had one job is going to go to Jaheim Jostam uh, for his um, <laughs> for his fumbling the ball into the back of the end zone, uh, causing a touchback for the other team. Um, that would have won us the game. It's, it's, if, you it's, the numbers, <laughs> if you look at the numbers, we would have won. It's, it's the difference scored. in the game. So, you know, you had one job right there. Didn't hold on to the ball. Uh, My you had one job has to go to the entire dimes. Uh, Return team. No, 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 not the entire dimes. The left side was lined up 10 yards. The right side was lined up 15 okay, yards. Okay, okay, I digress. Um, they were about 15 yards off the ball. Uh, Cam Burns set to kick, kicks it perfectly at about 12 yards. If you look at it, they don't even move. Yeah, they don't move an inch. They just <laughs> let us drop on the ball. And then the moment that we get it and we show that we return or that we recovered, they all start complaining like they lined up 10 yards and it only went nine. Like they didn't move an inch and it, only, and it went 12 yards. And they literally like, yeah, it didn't cross the line. You look back at the film. Here's the line. Here's the ball. <laughs> Dimes, come on, man. You had one job. Can someone send me the film of that? Because every player on that right side is now on the chopping block. I will for sure. <laughs> I will for sure block, send please. you the video. Please, I'll take anything. I got you. My, you had one job goes to Michael Gould. You know, we had we had a lot of hope for him going into the year. We <laughs> had, two weeks in a row, Michael. He's he did make some good plays. You know, pancake a couple guys. He makes good pancakes at school, like some of us know. And he'll make good pancakes on the field. But when he's not on the field. Me and Jackson were in the booth, <laughs> and he came over mid-game, starts typing on his phone like he's making text messages, and then slides the phone over to us, and it says, I demand a trade, <laughs> in the middle of the game. Because he was upset he wasn't playing quarterback, so mid-game comes over the commentator's booth and demands a trade. So, Michael, stick it out at least till the end of the game, man. You had one a job. I think he and honestly <laughs> thinks the commentator's booth is like his personal lounge. <laughs> <laughs> like during the game, like last week, they had six guys on the field. They walked out, just took a water break, filled the comments, <laughs> and he literally typed in his notes. There were like other notes on top. It was of like a was big like, note I'm for. Him. Like, I'm like, Mike, what is this? Like, look at the bottom. And he's like, I demand a trade. Get me out of here. <laughs> and and who was it that said he was gonna be the MVP for the first? Uh... I remember that bit. Someone said it. No one me. No one um, me. That or someone man. mentioned him as a breakout player or something. <laughs> was... I said he was gonna have a good game. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and this dude had one job, cost the aces their game. Preston over here is running wide open, Jackson Gravely throws a beautiful dime, as you can see, and Preston just drops it. It just goes right through his hands, I mean, it was like, he was playing basketball, it was, it was bad. It was very bad, it cost him the game. Jackson Gravely, I'm sorry for you, it cost you a touchdown pass. Uh, it's like a 60 yard they still pass. did. They still did score on that They drive. scored on the drive. Though. So, did they actually? Yeah. 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 So I could see Preston being very heated. Yeah, I'd be a lot more more heated. It was still pathetic, Preston. It was. It really it was. was. Just catch it the was, ball. It was, it was just pathetic. You have one job. You have two throw. hands. Catch the ball. And one of the questions was if Gravely could even get the ball that far. He, the one, the the one time that he, he throws a perfect yes. deep ball. Right through his yeah. drop. Say, he has a very small arm, and for an eighth grader, he has a huge arm. Like, if you look at some of his throws... He's like 14 going yeah, against like 19-year-old guys. I mean, he's going against like guys. Nico Brown. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. He could be his child. Uncalled for. <laughs> Uncalled for. Chris Jacobs actually clipped one of the plays and showed his mom and said, I'm pretty sure I faced a 26-year-old. <laughs> and then he sent photos of the Dimes group chat of bruises on his neck because his mom thought his girlfriend was giving him hickeys. So. I, I also looked. I was like, wow, you had a good 
good time, Chris, huh? He's like, no, this is against Nico, your big dude over there. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry for him. Like, dude, no, I'm sorry. Big grown adult who's been voting for seven years. <laughs> he voted in the Barack Obama election. <laughs> when he was buying alcohol, I was in fifth grade. <laughs> I don't know if we can include that. I don't think it steps over the line too much. I'll do it for a week four field side (laughs) chat. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we all have. (laughs) Oh man, sorry, (laughs) Nico. All right, but we want to shout out Rooted Landscaping for all they've donated and all they've done for the DXFL. We really couldn't do it without you. I know we talk about every week. Our local sponsors have been great, and Rooted Landscaping is one of those. Um, So thank you. We really appreciate you and all you do for us. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next week.